On March 26, 1974, on a remote piece of land in Fort George Island, Florida, owned by Jerry and Antoine Betts, a wildfire broke out in the middle of the night, burning acres of brush. The cause of the fire is unknown. But the next day, as the family was investigating the damage, they came upon a strange object, a metal sphere. Jerry Betts and her son, Terry, went out there, and Terry sees this metallic-looking ball in the ground there. And he picks it up and shows it to his mother, and they uh, take it back to the house. And a couple of weeks went by, and Terry had the ball on a table next to his bed. And he took his guitar out. He started strumming it. And the ball started vibrating. The bed sphere began to make headlines in April of 1974. One of the first to break the story was a young reporter named Ron Kivett who conducted an exclusive interview with Jerry Betts just after she had made her amazing discovery. When you found it, or was it just lying flat on top of the ground? It was lying on the ground, sort of like a wooded area. Right. And we didn't think too much about it. We ran it for two weeks. Mm -hmm. And then we noticed that it kept quivering. Hmm. About the best description is that it's a giant gyroscope. It's vibrating and quivering, even when you put it on a flat surface. Mm -hmm. I see. And we were going to see all over the country. I can imagine you would. In February of 2017, investigative journalist Linda Moulton Howe traveled to Jacksonville, Florida, just 20 miles from the site where the Betts family made their incredible discovery. Hi, Ron. Hi, Linda. Nice to, to meet you. Come yes, on in. Thank you. She arranged to meet with Ron Kivett to get a first-hand account of his experience with this bizarre object. And you've actually held this silver I have silver actually sphere. held them all, right. Talk about what happened, I'm so curious. You get to their house. How was the Bat Sphere introduced? How did they show you? Um, the ball was on a, a coffee table, a uh, glass top coffee table in a foyer. Uh, much like this, a little bit larger, but it was windows all the way around, almost like an atrium. And uh, I said, you know, can I pick it up? And Jerry said, oh, sure. So I, I pick it up, and it was heavier than I anticipated it to be. About 20 pounds, right? That's what they said, yeah, about 20 pounds. The ball had a much rougher texture to it than I anticipated. And if you moved it, you could hear a very faint tinkling inside it. It wasn't a hum or a buzz. It was that tink, tink, tink. Terry had the ball in his room, and he began to notice that even when the ball wasn't moving, he could hear this tinkling sound. I decided I wanted to, get, to take the ball outside and get some pictures with natural light. The ball was back on the table, so we all get up to leave to go find a spot to shoot it in, and the ball rolled all the way to the edge and stopped. And it was just like, don't forget me. That's when the hair stood up on my arms. After observing the strange behavior of the sphere for several weeks, the Betts family decided to submit it to the military for examination. It got interest from the Navy. It got interest from the United States government. And during the testing of it, they found it was made of a stainless steel metallic alloy, specifically the ferrous alloy number 431. And then when it was analyzed with X-ray spectrography, the interior of the sphere was hollow and had smaller spherical objects which were analyzed to have an atomic weight of 140. Now, the largest atomic weight that we see in nature is uranium, which is a 92. 